Welcome to the DevOps Lab Demystifying ARM Templates, the series. On this episode, we'll get started with ARM Templates. We'll figure out what tools to use and we'll deploy our very first ARM Template. And today we have a very special guest Neil Peterson. Welcome to the show, Neil. Tell us a little bit about yourself and let's dive in and get started with ARM templates. Thanks a lot, Abel, uh, for having me. Uh, my name is Neil Peterson. I'm a senior program manager and I work on the VS Code extension for authoring ARM templates. Okay. So first things first, right? Before we get started with ARM, we probably need the right tools. So what are the tools you like to use when you start building out your ARM templates? Yeah, so there's several out there. Really, the one that I'm going to focus on is just the um, Azure Resource Manager um, tools for VS Code. So I'm in VS Code right here, and we can see that I've got Azure Resource Manager tools. Um, and if you want to see that on the marketplace, we can just do aka.ms forward slash arm tools. Um, and we've got some docs and some other things as well. You can get to the GitHub repository from this page. So if you do have issues with the tools or you need to ask questions, uh, this is a good place to do that. Cool, cool. So I just installed this tool, this extension in VS Code, and I should be ready to go? Yeah. So you want to see how it works? Absolutely, I do. And, and beyond that, let's just go ahead and you know create a very basic ARM template and look at the structure of an ARM template. And like you said, we'll go ahead and deploy it. Okay. Um, so I'm just in VS Code here, and I'm just going to create a new file. And I'll call that Azure Deploy.json. Okay. Um, so, so now ARM templates, gonna, ARM templates are all in JSON? Um, it's JSON like. So um, I like to refer to it as the ARM templating language. It's built on JSON, but we've added some additional things like uh, looping conditions and some more programmatic things to it. OK. So in VS Code, I've got this JSON document. In fact, notice down here that VS Code has recognized the language type as JSON. Um, mm -hmm. And that's pretty important. And we'll see why here in just a moment. Um, so I'm going to use the VS Code extension to scaffold out a very basic ARM template. Um, and to do so, and really when I say basic, a, a bare bones ARM template. So in this JSON document, I'm going to type in ARM um, and then an exclamation point. And what we have here now is a scaffolded ARM template. And all of the different um, areas that we use when deploying ARM templates. Now we're going to go through some of these in, in more depth in future videos, but just really quickly, I'm going to walk top to bottom and talk about some of these things. So here on line two, you see schema. And this is really like the version of the ARM template, or another way to think about it is the scope of our ARM template. So I'm actually going to play around in here a little bit. By default, we've got deployment template.json. And this is assuming that we're going to deploy this template um, at a resource group. And when we're targeting a resource group, there's a specific set of resources that can be deployed to a resource group. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'll just hit Control Space. And we can see some of the other schema versions that we can use here. So we can create uh, ARM templates that can be deployed to a management group or a subscription or a tenant. And based on the scope, you know, we've got access to different types of resources. And that's what this schema defines. It's a, it's a JSON document that defines all the resources that we can include in the template when deploying to that scope. So it defines our scope. Okay. The next thing is a content version, and this is really just a, uh, an area for you to version your template. So if you've made a major change, you might change this content version to two. Um, the next thing down here on line four, we've got parameters. So when we're deploying a template, you may want to have like user inputs. Like if you're deploying a, a storage account, which we're going to do in this video, you might want to input the name that you want to give that storage account. And we uh, define those here. Um, the next thing we have is functions. Um, and a function is basically 
it gives you the ability to create your own functions within an ARM template. So let's say that you like have a complex method for naming resources that concatenates a couple different strings and performs some other logic to arrive at a resource name, and you use that throughout a template in many different places, rather than repeating that logic throughout the template, we can just create a function that returns that properly named resource name and, and, and consume that later in the template. Cool. Uh, the next thing we have is variables, very similar to parameters, but um, we don't allow you to input a value for a variable. So this would be like maybe, you know, I've got a specific um, storage account size or storage account skew that I want to use across my templates. I can define that as a variable. And if I change that, rather than having to go to all those different resources and update that skew, I can just change it in the variable. Um, the next section is resources. And this is where we define find the resources that we do want to deploy in Azure. And this is where we're going to spend all of our time in this video. And then finally, outputs. So if there are things that I want to output to the screen during a deployment, I can define those in this section. Um, but it's a, it, there, it's a little more powerful than just outputting data. Um, when we get into like more complex deployments where we're chaining a series of templates together, um, we can take the output from one template and use it as the input into a parameter in another template. So a couple different uh, of the use cases of outputs. Okay. All right, so we've got a very, very bare bones template right here. And now this is a valid template. I can actually deploy this template if I wanted to in its current state. However, nothing's really gonna happen because we have nothing to find in there. All right, so let's go ahead and add a resource. And I'm actually going to use a capability of the VS Code extension to add a storage account in here. So with the VS Code extension, we've got snippets for a bunch of different Azure resources. So I'm just going to type in storage, or S-T-O-R, and you can see there that I've got arm-storage. I'm just going to hit Enter. And what this does is it puts in a valid, um, the valid ARM templating language for a storage account into the resources section. Cool. Now, uh, I can use the tab key to tab through this snippet and update a couple things. So let me just give this a name. I'll call it learn arm 001. And then if I hit tab, you can see I'm now on line 16 at kind and I can like arrow through the different types of storage accounts. I can change some other things, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay. Now, looking at this resource here, we've got a couple different common things that we're going to see across all different Azure resources or requirements for defining a resource in a template. The first is a name. So I've given it a name that's pretty um, uh, easy to understand. That's going to be the name of our storage account. The next thing when we're defining any Azure resource in a template is we need to specify the type. And in this case, we've got Microsoft.Storage and then storage accounts. Um, next line down, we've got the API version. So as we update um, the capabilities and properties on these resources, the resources themselves get a new API version. So we're just specifying which version of the storage account we want to create. Um, tags are going to be the tags that we put on the resource once it's deployed to Azure. Um, and then we've got a couple other things, but these are kind of the big ones that you're going to see across all Azure resources. Um, now, this is ready to go, but I think what I'll do is highlight a couple other little things that we can do as we're authoring resources uh, when we create our templates. And these are capabilities that the VS Code extension gives us. Um, the first thing is validation. So notice here that I've got a kind of storage V2. Um, let me give this a value, like a non-valid value. So let me do mega storage. And notice here that now my kind has a little yellow squiggle under it. Um, what it's doing is it's indicating like, hey, this is not a valid value for this property on a storage account. And you can see there in the message that it does list out the valid values. Um, so that's a, an example of, of validation, validating our templates before we deploy them. So let me now get a list of valid storage account kinds. So I can put my cursor in these double quotes here, hit control space, and it provides me a completion list of storage account kinds. And so I'll go ahead and select storage V2. 
Now let's um let's say we wanted to add some additional things to this storage account. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to add a comma under SKU, a carriage return, and again uh, hit Control Space. And this is going to bring up a list of configurations and properties that I can add to this storage account. So let me go down to properties. Um, I'll hit colon. And I'll do the same thing here. And we can see the things that I can configure inside the properties for a storage account. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at this supports HTTPS traffic only. Hit a colon and I'll hit true. So you can kind of see how the, the VS Code extension allows us to author these resources in kind of an intelligent way. All right, so now we've got um, our first ARM template. Very basic. We've defined a storage account. We haven't messed around with parameters or variables or anything. We'll dig into those in, in a future video. Let's now go ahead and see what it looks like to deploy this thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to open up the integrated VS Code terminal. Mm -hmm. um, there are actually several different ways that we can deploy ARM templates. We can use the Azure CLI, which I'm going to do here. We can use PowerShell. We can actually use the Azure portal if we wanted to. Um, so again, we've got a couple different methods for doing it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create an, a resource group um, that we will deploy deploy this at template into. Again, kind of going back up to what we talked about earlier, this is a template that's scoped for a deployment to a resource group. So I need that resource group. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the Azure CLI to create a resource group. Uh, so I'll do az group create name, and I'll just give it the same name as the storage account here. And then I need to pick a location for it. And I'll do East US. All right, so we've successfully created our resource group, and now I'm going to deploy this template into that resource group. And again, the end result is that we should have a storage account um, in that resource group when we're done. So I'm going to do az deployment group create. And what I want to feed into this is the name or the, lo the location and name of the template file. So I'll do template file, Azure deploy.json, and then I need to give it the name of the resource group that we want to deploy it into. So learn ARM 001. Go ahead and hit enter. And so now um, the Azure CLI is, is locating the ARM template uh, file um, and deploying that into the resource group that we've just created. And while that happens, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the portal and we'll just take a look at it once it's been deployed. All right. And there is the resource group. Okay. And we can see that a deployment is in process right now, but it hasn't completed. And we can also watch the progress here um, as the Azure CLI works. All right, cool. Now we can see that the deployment has succeeded. So let's pop back over to the Azure portal. I'll go ahead and refresh this. There and boom, there's our storage account. Very cool, man. All right, that wasn't that bad at all, right? So creating our first template, not too hard, especially with that extension. I have got to install that extension. Now, trying to learn ARM all at once, it can be a challenge. But on this series, we break it down one piece at a time, so you can easily learn all the ins and outs of ARM templates. For more information about ARM templates, click on the links below. We also have links to our GitHub repos that has all of the stuff, everything that we're doing. And all you devs, join us next time as we dive into parameters for ARM on the DevOps Lab.